Explosion. Welcome to another episode of the Lunatic Show. I am your host, MC Loon, anti-flat earther extraordinate. Today's episode will be a treat since we have a special guest, none other than the top G himself, AI Andrew Tate. Welcome. Thanks for having me, MC Loon. So what you are saying is that you look up to me and I presume top G stands for the globe is on top, right? No and no. Saying, so what you are saying and thereby distorting what I said and answering that as if I was saying something I did not. That is a straw man fallacy. Assuming makes an ass out of you and me. The earth measures flat. There is no evidence of the earth being in motion and the globe has no way to hold the gas on the ball. Okay, so you clearly are afraid of debating me. It's easy to see the earth moves. If the earth is moving, I would see the sun appear to move. I look at the sun. It moves across the sky, therefore the earth is moving. That is an affirming the consequent logical fallacy that can only assume not lead you to a conclusive conclusion. Simply put, the sun could simply be moving. Occam's razor. But the stars are moving. That means the earth is moving. Same argument, but since you did not formulate it into a affirming the consequent on the surface, even if it's hidden within your argument, as it stands, it's only jumping to the conclusion, which is also a fallacy. So that is not valid. Okay, but the moon is moving. That means the earth is. Now you are essentially appealing to repetition. You should already know that you can only see lights in the sky, how they work, and why we see what we see can only be assumed or accepted for what we see based on the little information we have. You can listen to Michio Kaku, a professor of Harvard and world-famous science communicator, play the clip, please. Science, we always say that you make observations, you have a theory, you go make more observations, and it's a very, very tedious process. Wrong. Nobody that I know of in my field un uh, uses the so-called scientific method. In our field, it's by the seat of your pants. It's leaps of logic. It's guesswork. It's guesswork. It's guesswork. Okay, well, guesswork is good work. But we have freakouts pendulum. It goes in a circle due to rotation. Science proved it. It's called Foucault's pendulum and is pseudoscientific. It's not a valid experiment. It's only a parlor trick. It requires a magnetic drive to keep pushing it, and there is no valid naturally observed phenomenon, no valid independent variable and zero controls. The effect is only observed within the apparatus. And so it has no scientific validity. It just has beliefs conjured through fallacious connotations. They can imagine it is caused by rotation. But if the pendulum is deviating due to Coriolis, then we would see the same with everything not attached directly to the ground. Airplanes, balloons, bullets, etc. But we do not. Yes, but super laser gyros show rotation. You mean optical gyros, like ring laser gyros that operate on the Sagnac effect. The Sagnac effect has been shown with linear motion when it was only assumed to be detectable from rotation. So now we know it should be picking up imagined orbit, motion of the sun and galaxy but it only seems to pick up the motion of the stars and then deviates based on the sun and its season and your position relative to it. So it proves the whole religious view of the globe false, but its exact cause is unknown. Those are just more fallacies, straw man fallacy, misrepresenting my argument to divert from the conclusions of it. Then faulty generalization or all scientists don't agree. Even if they did it is an ad populum fallacy. The popularity of something does not support its validity. You concede, then provide invalid counter-arguments that are incoherent. Meanwhile, a mechanical gyroscope operates on the gyroscopic effect which the optical gyroscopes lack. They can be used for the same purpose. But the way they get there is very different. The gyroscopic effect is described as rigidity in space. This aspect would show rotation as the gyro would orient relative to its original orientation when you spun it up. Gyroscopes don't show this due to imagined Earth rotation. Same with the curve of the imagined globe, it would be shown as the gyro would process relative to the housing, maintaining its rigidity in space, which would make the mechanical gyroscope useless for the purposes they get used for. But my toilet water goes in a circle because of earth rotation. That is an invalid counter-argument again, 
and a red herring fallacy, when in reality Coriolis is an apparent optical illusion from being rotated relative to the object not attached to the rotated frame. It's not actual deviation, so no force is applied to the object. Therefore, there is no way for it to cause things to go in circles. Even worse is this assumption has been shown to be false with recordings of tornadoes spinning in either directions being spawned under the same storm system. Then there is the shape of the bowl and how the water enters the bowl that leads to circular flow. So the question really is, why don't we see any deviation with things rising or falling? Since to stay over the same spot as they rise or fall, they would have to accelerate or decelerate to the side with the rotation to make it appear, to not have rotation like we see in real life. This would be measurable with accelerometers. Why don't we see any evidence of this assumed motion? I'm not a scientist, I just know scientists, and they say you are wrong. Okay, cool, what was their argument? That you are wrong. That is not an argument, that is a bare assertion. Please try to get him to address these issues. There are many, many more. I am only scratching the surface. Like for instance, think about the orbit and globe with how gas acts with moving objects. A car, for example, the faster it goes, the more the gas in front of it gets compressed and the gas behind it gets displaced. So simply put, if the globe was orbiting, one side of it would suffer from serious pressure issues, killing all life and affecting sound due to the Doppler effect. While at the same time, on the other side of the globe, you would have an effective vacuum killing all life and affecting sound again. How can gravity know to pull only harder on the gas on one side of the globe and to pull only less on the gas on the other, especially when we don't? see gas being held down to the ground at all. It expands to fill the available volume, moving freely and randomly in all directions, having no attractive or repulsive forces between the gases. Yes, but the atmosphere is a gradient that reaches to zero. Atmo and sphere are a contradiction in terms. Gas inherently takes the shape of its container. It cannot hold its own shape. You assume the gradient goes to zero because you were told so. What we do know is pressure decreases with altitude but so does temperature. We are told it gets hotter above where no man can go, so hot it would melt aluminum. But they say they can measure it because of the low pressures, so that is only a just-so story. With drop in temperature, gas loses pressure. Gas is constantly moving, creating pressure, and equalizing with the surrounding air. This creates our dynamic moving pressure systems from the constant input of thermal energy from the sun. And because the sun moves the air, the gas equalizes accordingly. Add on top of all this the gas generation at ground level and gas condensation into liquid above, making this gradient sharper. Hot air rises, cold air falls, but that is in relation to its surroundings. At no point can anyone show gas not expanding to fill the available volume or this imaginary gravity, overcoming the second law of thermodynamics. It would be violating all observed gas behavior. That's enough. I got you now. Gravity. That proves the globe. Now I will explain like you to prove my point. In the beginning, there was nothingness. That nothingness got pregnant, and energy was born. Energy begat matter. Matter begat gravity. Gravity begat globes. So now we all worship the big G, not the top G. Done. Globe proven. Now what do you have to say about that? At least you admit it's a religion. It's not. It's a philosophical framework and a set of belief systems that I take on blind faith from the authority of my religion. No, I mean cult. No, I mean atheism. Come on, man, you know what I mean. The thing. Let's continue. Gravity is the reason for the current cosmological crisis. And so academia is looking for quantum gravity. So when you ask the renowned astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson what is gravity, when he bothers to be honest, just listen to this clip. What is gravity? We have no idea. Okay, next question. <laughs> wow. No, here's the difference. We can describe gravity. Okay. We can say what it does to other things. We can, we can measure it, predict with it. But when you start asking, like, what it is, I, I, I don't know. It He's just uninformed. I know more than him from watching YouTube videos from Fight the Tight Shirt. Things still fall down. That is never in dispute the why and how are. So what is gravity, or more specifically, the vector leading to the relative density distribution? We can simulate it with motion, but it's variant over the face of the plane, and even in the same locale. So we know it's not due to motion. If you asked me to guess, I would say it's a yet undiscovered quantum effect of our reality. Why? I cannot tell you. 
So you do not know that means I win, right? No, it means I'm being honest and you are just using malicious manipulative tactics. Care to tell me which gravity you believe in? There is only one gravity. Oh, really? When I drop something at 9.8 meters per second in a vacuum tube, is the object falling, moving, or stationary? It's obviously moving. So you disagree with Einstein then? Since to him and in that sect of gravity, the object in free fall is stationary or in the inertial reference frame. In Newton, the object on the ground is not moving or is stationary. No, I just agree with both at the same time. That is a violation of the law of non-contradiction. As incoherent as that is, you are allowed to believe whatever you like. Can you at least understand that such reasoning will never convince a reasonable person who understands logic? No, you don't understand logic. A two quoque fallacy and denial. But I will indulge you. Where is my error or how so? It's a straw man. What is? Be very specific. Everything. Everything you say is a straw man. So you are just refusing to engage. I was asking for specificity, not a faulty generalization and psychological projection. So are we done here? Yes, you hurt my feelings. My feelings are more important than anything. Therefore, you are a baddie who can no longer be my daddy. Okay, wow. Since this is over, I take my leave. AI Andrew Tate won't be subjected to this nonsense anymore. Peace to all the sane people out there. Shout out to 24-7 Flat Earth Discord. Its moderators and staff are excellent. Highly recommend. And MC Loon, good luck with all that. AI Tate out. Yeah, you scared. Running. What did you say? Nothing. Nothing. Thank you, everyone, for another great episode of The Lunatic Show. This has been your host, MC Loon. Check out our sponsors and pay me more money on Patreon. That is how this works. You incentivize my dishonesty, people. Keep it coming, or I might just become an NPC streamer. Yum, yum. Ice cream so good. Yum, yum. Ice cream so good. Until next time, goodbye. Explosion. <laughs> 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 Whoa!